Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. And all I can say is, whew, what a week. Many of you would have known if you'd followed my channel and I've had a lot of comments in regards to the clip which I've done my previous update to me having a third hernia, a severe, severe overactive bladder. And you know what? One of the worst weeks of my life, I have to admit. So we are on Saturday evening and if we go back in time to last weekend. I had a nice Saturday. I had a really nice Saturday evening. But towards the latter part of the evening, I could start to feel a lot of pressure in my groin. Um, and I've had a lot of problems recently over the past coming weeks, and it certainly got a lot worse in regards to my walking, the dropping sensation, the, the real problems which having had two previous hernias there on my right side of my groin, and having a third, being told I had a third back in December of 2019, um, and having a lot of problems with it, a lot of dropping sensation, a lot of pain, discomfort, and that's gradually been giving me a lot more problems. On this particular evening, um, and I've had another episode like this, but this was by far the worst, where I had, I was watching a film and I could feel a lot of pressure starting to sort of be there in my groin. It was making me feel really quite uncomfortable. I was trying as ever just to get on with things and just to ignore it and just to concentrate on something else. But it was a real deep sensation of sort of pressure, discomfort and walking around. It was really like I was walking around on something in my right groin. Um, as the evening kind of progressed, I never really thought too much more of it, but it was kind of getting a little bit worse, I think. And then time to when we had the evening, Saturday evening, and I, and I went to bed. I was finding it really difficult to get off to sleep. I was very, very uncomfortable. I um, mean, my groin was very uncomfortable, sort of twisting and turning. Um, I couldn't really sleep any sense at all. So I had a very sort of restless sort of phase before I eventually I went off to sleep. Um, and I'd say about half past two in the morning, early hours of Sunday morning, I woke up with the immense pressure in my groin and pain, a lot of pain. Um, and it, and it was really quite worrying, really, really concerning to me. Um, and in a way, it was a moment where I was really quite worried about what have I done? Have I caused something to happen? Um, is it me? Have I, have I done something to make things worse? I'm really worried in this sort of sheer sort of moment and a bit of a panic for me, I have to admit. I'll be very honest, I then went to use the bathroom and I couldn't. So I, I couldn't pass urine. And... Um, the pressure and the pain was there and I really knew something was terrible. And as I came out of the bathroom, not being able to, of course, um, that was it. It seemed to just ramp up the pain so much. And in, in that instance, it was really like that something had dropped and fallen and I had the most immense burning sensation. I managed to get myself down the staircase and into our hallway. We have quite a long hallway and I got myself to the floor and I was trying to get this dropping sensation, this really hot burning, like something had fallen out of place, up. So I was lifting my legs up and I was led flat on the floor and I couldn't. So with that, I shouted up the stairs for somebody or one of my parents, my mum or my dad. And my dad came down and sat with me and it was a real panic moment and it was absolutely horrendous. Um, and you know what? It was a part of my life where I really, really thought something horrific was happening. I mean, it was a good hour before things slowly settled down. I had a lot of pain in the in that sort of localised area in my groins, um, in, in my privates, to be honest with you. I had a lot of pain there. Um, and it was putting me through hell, I have to admit. It really, really was. And it was horrific. Um, after quite some time, I managed then to sort of come... I, my, my father wanted to take me to A&E accident and emergency straight away, but I didn't want to. I'm determined with everything going on at the moment with COVID virus, with the COVID pandemic rather, um, I really didn't want to. I didn't, I, I've got this in my mind that I really don't want to take resources up in my head and I've got my referral waiting. Um, but wow, talk about feeling unwell. I really felt horrendous, really felt horrendous. Um, and... After it kind of settled to be sort of well, to a point where I could manage, it certainly didn't disappear to a point where I could manage the pain. I kind of sort of played it down with my dad um, and I kind of said, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I think he knew, to be honest with you, and so did my mum. No, um, because of course your parents know you, don't they? They know you inside out. They know everything what goes on in your mind and they know how you are. They're the very you, aren't they? So, um, yeah, so I, I, I really... Um, 
kind of tried to sort of hide it almost. And I don't really know why, because I didn't want to go to hospital, I think. And um, after a while, I came back up to my room, my bedroom, and um, I got to my bed. And it was very, very difficult for me to lie on my bed. And um, I lifted my knees and I could slowly feel something sort of real hot and burning coming back up. And um, after some time, I must have fallen off to sleep. And I remember waking up in the morning with this real sharp sort of staggering discomfort. And um, after some real discomfort, I was quite sort of honest with myself in, in, in the fact that something was very wrong. Um, so we, I called the 111 service here in the UK, which is like a general sort of emergency, but not serve emergency advice line. And um, it was very quick and apparent to them. They wanted me to be seen an accident and emergency, be, especially because of the two previous hernia operations I'd had. And um, with that being said, I um, my uh, my and of course with the COVID pandemic, only one person could be in A and E. And you know it was a fantastic uh, arrangement and setup because as soon as I went to my local A and E service, um, they were waiting for me. A surgical registrar was waiting for me, and a doctor was waiting for me. They went through my symptoms and everything. Um, but the particular scan I needed, I couldn't have on the day. And because, of course, the pain had subsided to a bit more, not comfortable, but manageable uh, status, um, I was arranged that after about, I think it was about two hours after having quite a lot of pain relief, which made my head feel very, very lightheaded. Don't forget, I have a hearing problem and a balance condition. Um, so they give me some very strong pain relief. Um, I think it was ibuprofen, codeine, um, it was about five different tablets I'd, I'd um, taken and it took the edge off of the discomfort I had but I still certainly had it there and it was, it literally felt like I'd been kicked in the stomach um, and lower to be quite honest with you so and walking with it was just horrendous and don't forget I had a mask on because of the, COVID, uh, the coronavirus pandemic as well so with hearing problems it was all such a stressful sort of experience I couldn't hear what the consultant was saying the surgical registrar was very very difficult so after some time I was arranged to then come back into the hospital the following day they wanted to admit me but I was absolutely categorically not going to be admitted I didn't want to be admitted to the hospital um, because of everything going on in my problems I really really, really didn't want that so I came home, had a very uncomfortable, um, very uncomfortable evening. And after the medication, I really felt very, very lightheaded, very off balance, very uncomfortable. Um, and sort of fast forward into the um, in into the morning, I uh, on the Monday I was asked um, to go back up to the A and E service and into something called ambulatory uh, care centre, and. Um, I was there and then the experience slightly went downhill unfortunately I was there and I had a bunch of different tests and um, I seen a surgical registrar or a doctor and several different people who were examining me and about the hernia and you could just see that they didn't know where it was such a complex sort of issue and I had such a history with hernias it was all very very difficult and I was expecting to have a ultrasound scan I was told I was having an ultrasound scan that apparently was cancelled because of the two previous hernia operations I'd had and apparently it would make it very difficult to see if I had a reoccurring hernia and if there was any problems with the existing repairs which I had to the feminal in the inguinal uh, repair so that was cancelled and it was sort of humming and harring and of course I was sat in a waiting room I say sat all different positions to be quite honest with you and I at times I felt really very unwell in a lot of pain discomfort and the day just sort of went on with with being passed from pillar to post really and being really uncomfortable really very painful um and then it wasn't until the following day where there was another emergency which came in apparently which topped mine which absolutely i can completely understand that and i hope that that person or whatever situation which was an emergency above mine went to recover to good health and, and were very well looked after but it meant that on the tuesday i, I I spent a lot of waiting around with the hospital and um, I wasn't actually seen for a scan which was then arranged for me on the following day which was the Wednesday to have a MRI scan um, with dye um, and all sorts of different tests and at this time from the Sunday I was still in just the same amount of pain discomfort and this week I've just felt like I've had no energy I felt really very unwell with it and I really did think that something really awful was happening to me and I've just felt so strange um, throughout this week and there's so much pain and discomfort in my groin and being able to walk around I haven't barely been able to put my foot to the ground um, and it's just been awful and on the Wednesday I had a very another again a very very long day with seeing um, a consultant 
the original surgeon, which done my operation, um, and a surgical registrar, um, but again, didn't really hear what I wanted to hear, and um, apparently that if they were to open my groin up again, it would be a very complex and a very catastrophic uh, situation, and I thought, wow, being told this, and I really did think to myself that I would be left in this situation after... Um, spending quite a few days in A&E, um, again wanted me to be admitted, but I was categorically sure I didn't want to be admitted, but the deal was that I had to keep going to the hospital, um, which was fine. Um, they were ready to give me some very, very strong nerve relaxant pain relief medication, which I didn't want because, of course, with my condition with my hearing, I have to be really, really very careful with that. So I was left in a situation after I left that day where they weren't prepared to do any operations to, to get me out of this pain. They weren't prepared to repair any any sort of recurrent hernia. Um, and the MRO, MRI scan showed a very complex situation in my groin with lots of scarring tissue. And I think I had several doctors sort of humming and hawing over what would be the next plan first. So it was Suggested that I would be seen by the original surgeon. So at this point, you can imagine the amount of people I've seen, the amount of discomfort I was in, the pain. All I really wanted to do, to be honest with you, was to just go home. And on the on the Thursday, um, I was in a real lot of discomfort again. And um, I, a couple of the nights in the week, I really was very uncomfortable with the problems I had. So I've had an absolute nightmare of a week. And I thought to myself that I really need to get in touch with the surgeon who done my original operations. Now I seen him very, very briefly on the Monday, I believe, and um, such a lot to try and keep track of. It really is what's happened this week. And uh, and he said that he would come up with a plan for me, coming towards of how to manage my symptoms and what would what on earth would be going on. So Thursday I got in touch and. Um, I managed to arrange an appointment to be able to be seen on the Friday in the afternoon, which of course was yesterday, and that appointment took place. Um, it was a very long appointment, lots of questions of course were going forward, still in a lot of discomfort, but now I'm in a situation where that potentially, um, and actually just to go over something as well, um, so I have a lot of colour uh, color change, so my leg on my bad side with the hernia, um, which would be the, the third hernia I've had on my right side, my leg actually goes blue now, so my foot changes colour to quite a blue colour. So on the Thursday evening, um, I really, after arranging the appointment and everything, of course, and phoning all around and GPs and doctors, and, and it was an absolute nightmare. And thankfully, my mum, bless her heart, helped me with it because I was just really not feeling very, very well at all. My mum helped me through it on the day and we really got me sorted with the appointments. I and mean, it's difficult and tough, don't forget, because, of course, I can't have anybody at the hospital at the moment with me, the coronavirus pandemic. And... Um, after that, I noticed on the Thursday evening my leg really, really changed to this horrible blue colour. So I thought I'd just take a picture on my phone and I'll save this for the consultant the surgeon who I'm seeing on the Friday. And I went through absolutely everything. And do you know what? I feel positive about my appointment, which happened yesterday, because the questions which were answered and apparently he's not done with me in terms of surgery, in terms of I thought nothing else was going to have to be done, but apparently the surgeon has to go back in and of course have a look for a reoccurrent hernia, but the problem, the dilemma they have is the ultrasound scan shows a clear third hernia, but the MRI scan, because of the scar tissue and everything, shows very, very difficult to be able to see what's going on. So I think ultimately what the surgeon is planning on doing is going in and repairing everything and having a good look around. But of course, because of the symptoms now where my leg's been changing colour, I'm being referred to a vascular surgeon because potentially there's a sort of issue around a sort of con connectivity um, cell sort of issue. Um, or even question, I think, Reynolds disease, which I think, pardon me for not necessarily knowing, is sort of the change of colour to the hands and feet, which I haven't had, but only since this surgery, my, my leg and my foot has been changing colour to like a blue colour and been causing me so many problems. And of course, don't forget, I have this real horrendous overactive bladder, um, extreme overactive bladder, which I'm facing um, surgery for that in uh, late August, I'm told. So lots going on um, in terms of health, but 
the surgeon uh, has now referred me to a vascular surgeon and potentially just to sort of put everything in straight, get a little bit more information about possibly removing some of the mesh which I've got in my groin because I have a mesh cone for the femoral hernia I had and I have a mesh plate for the inguinal hernia which I have as well. And then potentially of course this third ha uh, hernia hanging over me but apparently some of the mesh may well be causing some problems with the nerves in my groin um, because I have a lot of burning sensation, a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort and I find it very very difficult to put any weight on this leg. Um, particularly this week I just feel so so different with it as well. So it's ultimately been an absolute week of hell, absolute nightmare of mine. But after the appointment yesterday with the surgeon who done my original two surgeries, I do feel really positive. The surgeon was very clear in answering my questions and the things which he didn't know. Um, he acknowledged that we would be able to get me back to my old self, which absolutely hearing that was just incredible because lately I've always felt, and particularly this week, I thought I was going to be stuck after seeing um, in the accident emergency and then being ready to to sign me off with um, pain relief medications on a long-term basis. I really thought I'd be stuck with how I was walking and how I'm sort of feeling and the pain and discomfort in my leg. So I never ever thought that I'd be getting back to me, my old self. So um, yeah, and, and forgive me if I don't seem quite right in this video now because I am still uncomfortable. I'm still having a lot of discomfort, a lot of pain and getting around with things as well. We're moving on my leg. But um, hopefully moving forward, I am told, unfortunately, uh, that any type of surgery won't be able to take place for a couple of weeks yet because of the COVID-19 uh, the, the COVID, uh, uh, pandemic at the moment with the coronavirus pandemic. But um, at least I have a plan in place. I really don't want to have another week like what I've had um, and yeah just been absolutely awful but um, hopefully uh, touch wood touch my head that there isn't any problems with sort of circulation or vascular issues with my leg um, Reynolds disease or whatever that is which was suggested but um, and apparently I was told that for having two meshes in my leg with having that it would be a really worrying situation so they'd have to relook at the type of repairs which I'd have and have all that redone so hopefully that um, isn't because doesn't become more of an issue but um, the surgeon was quite quite open with me in terms of that he wasn't very happy with the repairs which I'd I'd had done and that he was disappointed with how I was left and um, and really apparently felt for me because of what I was going through and the pain I was still going through but I have to admit the local health team um, which I am being seen by are just being they are incredible really really thoughtful and um, yeah, thankfully, I'm very, very pleased. I have a great sort of team on board with me and um, I look forward to a bright future in the next coming months, I have to admit. But um, yeah, I mean, at the moment, walking around this week, I've had a lot of pain and discomfort. My back is absolutely playing me up terrible. My hip on my right side is really, really very uncomfortable as well. My groin, of course, and of course, throwing the bladder problems, which I have as well, which is absolutely horrific. And with that, let's be honest as well. This is YouTube. This is my channel up and down the bumpy roads of life. I have a lot of bowel related problems as well, which gives me an absolute nightmare. Um, and on top of that, it just makes you feel like rubbish, really. It doesn't make me feel like a 27 year old man, young, youthful, ready with the joys of spring, sort of bright and cheerful. It makes me feel awful, it makes me feel quite flat and discouraged with everything going forward in life. But um. I do feel more positive, I do feel more happy that I've seen the surgeon which done my original two operations and in the fact that I can take comfort from that he feels com confident that I will get back to being my old self really makes me feel like I just cried to be honest with you and makes me feel really really happy. So that is a positive. Um, Work's been very, very difficult for me this week as well unfortunately because I haven't been able to sit there, I just generally haven't felt well enough. So. Um, Hopefully, I hope to revisit that next week and I really, really hope to get back on board with things and start being my old self. I have to admit, I look in the mirror and I, and I really grip my teeth and I think to myself, come on, Bradley, you're made of strong stuff. You've really, you've got strong parents, strong grandparents. You need to really get going with this. But sometimes I, I have to admit, it really wears you down and it really does weigh it thin. But um, yeah, here's to really sort of getting on with things and hopefully... The future is sunny and bright, as I say to my twin brother when he's down. But, um, yeah, so my channel is all about being open and honest and, um, and the bumpy road of life. And let's put it this way. This was one hell of a bump in the road for me this week um, from last weekend, having horrific pain, to be quite honest with you. Um, 
I thought it was gonna I thought something was gonna happen to me. I didn't think I was gonna be here. Um, so it really really worried me. P particularly the amount of pain I had in that area, it really did worry me. Um, but yeah yeah. So anyway, hopefully on a bit more of a lighter note, we can move forward. And um, as I say, I've got a plan in place now. I'm waiting for my referral with a vascular surgeon. Um, and just to be open and honest, I am very, very pleased um, and very, very uh, privileged because I do have medical insurance in the background from my previous place of work. I have to admit it's been very, very costly. But um, the most disappointing thing if I had to wait on the NHS, I'd have to wait and wait and wait. But because of the mention of money, um, I'm being able to be seen very, very quickly. But but um, for that aspect, I am very, I am very privileged. I am very, very grateful. But um, do you know what? It got to the stage where if I had to pay just to be seen, I would have just paid because how unwell I felt um, was just absolutely horrific. Um, yeah, I really wouldn't want many days like that. Let's put it that way. Not at all. But um, hopefully, uh, if anybody has been following, and, I, and there has been a couple of people following my journey without my honeymoon nightmare. Um, but uh, yeah, this week was just an update why I haven't been on my channel, why I haven't been sort of uploading anything or making any comments. I sincerely apologise. I will be coming back to my comments and the people who have left comments for me. Um, so I do apologise. I will get round to it. Um, but for now, yeah, just feeling a little bit off with things, just starting to get back to how I um, normally feel. So thanks for bearing with me. And until next time, um, we will see you then. So thanks very much. And until next time, we'll see you then. Bye bye now.